Hey guys, Keith here, Two Guys Out Too, and uh, we're just making some homemade eggnog, and I figured why not just record it. There's a lot of people, you buy it at the store, maybe you go to get it, um, you can't find it, or it's, it's pretty pricey. Um, it's very, very simple to make. Um, you can pasteurize it yourself, or we'll, we'll heat the eggs up to a certain temperature. Um, the egg batter, the, the nog batter that, um, you know, people concerned about it being pasteurized, you're not eating any raw eggs. So it's very simple. I mean, basically, you're just going to need six six eggs. I usually use a dozen eggs. Um, I use any kind of regular milk. Uh, this is lactose free, um, and it's like a skim milk. Or you can use a thicker whole whole vitamin D milk with lactose, without whatever you want to do. You can use almond milk if you want. Um, also, you need some heavy heavy whipped cream, or you need to make this yourself from milk, um, some sugar, and just whip it until it's until it's, it's pretty thick. Um, we're going to use one pot, and this pot actually is going to fit inside another bigger pot that I have over here on the stove, and I can show you. I've got to heat it up while I'm doing it. This pot will fit inside that pot, and I have water down in here, and I'm, I'm getting the water up to temperature now because I want it slightly boiling. That way um, our eggnog uh, mixture in here will sit down in that water, and it won't be directly on the heat, and it won't burn. So uh, I'm just going to make mine in this in this pot here that fits inside my other pot you can do it in a bowl that's just more cleanup work so let's just get started here basically I've got fresh eggs for my chickens uh, you can buy any eggs at the store um, organic raised you know free range whatever brown it doesn't make a difference I've got a variety here of anything from a green uh, blue from our chickens to a white to a tan to uh, you know your traditional you know your brown eggs that everybody raves over um, they're all good. Ours are all organic, so I'm going to use them. We have them on hand, and I have probably 50 dozen down in the little refrigerator. So uh, I'm going to make them. I'm going to make the eggnog myself. Just so I'm going to show you guys how it's simple. Simple. Just get the one the one pot that fits inside your bigger pot that has water. That's going to boil our mixture in here. It's going to bring it up to temperature, and I'll show you how. Basically, we're just going to take the eggs, and we're going to separate the yolks. So uh, normally, I do it over the sink. It's hard for me to film and do it. I'm going to crack it on a, a, a flat surface and I'll show you how to separate the yolk. So we're just going to give a tap or two on this and we're going to separate it here and I can try to show you how you open it real gently. And we're just going to grab that white, the egg white we don't want to use. So we're going to, I'm going to save it in the Tupperware and I'm going to make a an egg white omelet or something out of it later instead of throw it away but you just go back and forth with these eggs I just dump them gently you don't want to break it you go back and forth in between the shell the two halves of the shell and you just get that white off there uh, you don't have to get it all the more you get the better and I'm going to take the one egg in there and that's one out of our 12 and we're just going to keep going I'll run one of these green eggs just like the Dr. Seuss book green eggs and ham that's probably where they got it from. So we're going to open them up. Like I said, we're going to save that, save the white down in there and try not to crack the yellow. If you crack the yellow, it doesn't matter. I just go back and forth from shell to shell until that white gets out of there. Boom. There's our second egg. And we're just going to keep going on down the line until we get 12. I, I do 12 because if I'm going to make this, I want to make enough for, you know, maybe eight glasses. Uh, 10 cups, eight to 10 cups is probably what it's gonna make. Uh, it doesn't make that much. If you if you got a lot of people coming over, I would recommend maybe a couple dozen eggs and just double up the ingredients. So there's our third egg there. And we're just gonna keep going down the line until we get 12. And some of the eggs, our eggs are incredibly hard. Uh, they're hard to get that, that yolk out sometimes. So, uh, Store-bought eggs are a little bit, a little bit softer, so you can crack the shell. We'll keep going. That one was a little messy, so I'll, I'll add one more in the final recipe. I'll put 13 in here. But uh, 
just go back and forth until you get all that, that protein, all that, that white is protein. We don't want that in there. It's gonna make for a non-custard-like eggnog. It's gonna be a little bit tougher. It's gonna try to harden up when we boil it. Or we uh, bring it up to temperature, we're gonna bring it up to 165 degrees. So we don't want any of that white in there. If you have a little bit, it's not gonna matter. Don't, don't sweat it. You'll get better and better at getting the egg whites off the egg yolk. Uh, the only other way to do it would you, you'd have to buy this from a specialty place that would just be straight egg yolks. But uh, it's good to do it yourself. Learn the technique, kind of get involved, say that you made it yourself. And it's going to be more beneficial when people people try it. They think you bought it at the store. And really, you made it right here in your kitchen. Um, they're going to be impressed. That's what you want. So I'm losing track of how many eggs I have. But in general, I do 12. And then uh, if you want to practice your batch first, you can do six eggs, split the recipe in half. But uh, you won't mess it up. It's not that hard. Just separate these eggs, get them in there. And we'll add our, our finishing uh, spices in there. A little bit of, you're gonna need the heavy whipped cream. You're gonna need some sugar. You're gonna use some regular milk. You're gonna use some cinnamon, some nutmeg allspice and uh, I also use a little bit of uh, it's kind of like an Asian cinnamon I've got it over there I don't have it in front of me but you can you can add whatever you want to this and you need some vanilla extract and uh, you'll have this thing tasting great in no time so all right we're getting down close to our last egg here just keep separating these back and forth you can use the other yolk you can kind of scrape off that, that white. That looks good to me. Let's do a couple more. Do a couple of these smaller ones. I thought I saw one in here, had a little crack in it. Maybe not. And I always crack my eggs on a flat surface. That way uh, the eggshell doesn't go inside of it. I drop that one there, but we'll get it out. Can't get it out, I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, let's do two more. Just to make sure we got enough here. And I'll add a little bit extra milk. So when you cook it, it's gonna start off thin. When it gets warm, it's gonna get thin in the pan or the pot. But it's gonna thicken up, especially when we cool it down. Uh, later and I'll show you guys how to do that. So this is our 12th egg here. Separate these, takes a little time, but uh, you'll get used to it. You get, you, you get faster and faster at it. So I'm working on a towel, that way I can just wipe my fingers down on this towel. I'm gonna take this away, save it, put it in the refrigerator and I'll make some uh, an egg white omelet with that. Let me get another towel here. So basically, what you're gonna want is I'm gonna use two cups of this heavy whipped cream. And before I do that, I'm gonna get my sugar. I'm gonna use a half cup sugar uh, for 12 eggs. You're supposed to use a cup, but you can always add more later once the, you know, you've heated up the eggnog solution. And uh, you don't wanna, overdo it with sugar. There's some people that shouldn't have sugar, but they want to taste some eggnog. So let's just do a half cup. Looks pretty good. And we're going to get our mixer ready here. Plug in our old school mixer. You can just get a hand mixer. You can do it by hand. Uh, you're probably going to tire out. Or if you don't use electric tools, you can use a, a rotary, a hand-operated rotary one. So we got our, we'll just insert our beater things. You can get these, I mean, at anywhere for cheap uh, if you bake a lot. And we'll show you how it is. This is called a mixer. And these are your, your little attachments that go in. These are gonna rotate back and forth and kind of whip up that, that solution for us. Very simple, you can get these at a yard sale for probably $2. You don't want to buy one new. So we've got our egg solution in that pan there, or the pot. 
and I'm gonna just pour it over. I'm gonna gently just pour in my sugar. I'm gonna get that all in there. Set that aside. I'm gonna mix that up. Get that sugar mixed into those eggs. You can see down in there. You don't wanna mix it a lot, but you definitely wanna get it into like a custard, custard-like filling. A smoothness, consistency, just to get the eggs in there. So let's go ahead with our heavy whipped cream. And I'm going to go ahead and just use, uh, I think I'm going to use two cups of this if I can get it open here. Let's just go with two cups. It's going to make it nice and uh, rich and creamy. And that's what we want. And I've got my little recipe here I always keep in the kitchen here. So let me just double check to make sure we've got everything going on. We've got the egg yolks. We used a dozen. We're going to go to the heavy whipped cream. We got two cups. So I'm going to pour that on in there. That'll, that'll make it nice and rich. I'm going to go ahead and just mix that around as well. You don't want the mixer up on high, it's got multiple speeds. That's the lowest setting there. We'll just go with the lowest because that heavy whipped cream, the more you whip it, the more it's going to want to turn into like uh, a whipped cream from using the heavy cream. That's how they make whipped cream you put on top of your desserts. You don't want to overdo it. We're just going to mix that in lightly and then we're going to go with two cups of milk right back in that same one. And this is like a skim milk, it's a little thinner, but uh, you can use vitamin D if you want. So we've got our two cups there. And remember I had an extra egg or so, an extra egg yolk, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. That'll thin it out a little bit. And we'll grab another half glass of glass. So let's mix that together again, once again on the low setting. ready for our spices here. That's mixed together there. You don't want to over mix it because it will start turning into a heavy, that heavy, heavy cream will turn into a heavy whipped cream. So we've got our spices over here and we're going to use, we're going to use a nutmeg, all spice, and a vanilla extract. Get this cleaned up here. And a vanilla extract, you can get pure, whichever company you want, or you can get imitation. I'm gonna use the pure. Um, this is my backup in case I run out, but I want, I want the pure vanilla. And uh, we're just gonna use a teaspoon for everything. Let's start off with the dry mix. Uh, we'll do some allspice. I'm just gonna do a full teaspoon of this allspice. We want it to taste nice and uh, seasonal with the holidays. And I'm just gonna do a level level spoonful of a teaspoon. Put that in there. And I'm gonna add a little bit more because I want it to really taste uh, Christmas or holiday feel. That's a done deal. Same thing with the nutmeg. Let's go ahead and juice that up. And it doesn't have to be heaping over the teaspoon. Just, just You can just have it flat. You can see how I have it. It's almost flat in there. It's plenty. You can add more later when it's cooking. You can taste it um, and, and always kind of add in a little bit more spices later while you're stirring it up. Let's go with some cinnamon. Now cinnamon's got a little bit more punch to it, uh, but I'm just going to do one of each, you know. Uh, I think it's just safer that way. And this, this here I got, uh, it's kind of like an Asian, Asian um, cinnamon. I got it at the, the local Asian store, and it's Galinga ginger powder. I'm gonna add maybe a half a teaspoon of this. You don't have to use this, but this gives it that extra where people, they don't really know what it is, and they're kind of like, wow, what is that? And uh, just hit them with some of that Galinga. It's a little bit of ginger, and it'll jazz it up a little bit. Uh, a little bit better than somebody else's. Now with the vanilla extract, make sure you, you shake it up real well. 
And I'm gonna use uh, two teaspoons of this. And that's pretty much it for that. Done deal. So now let's go ahead and mix this stuff up and get it in the, the, the other water in there that's starting to boil. And about 15, 18 minutes from now, we'll have ourselves some nice eggnog once we cool it down. It'll probably take about maybe 40 minutes, another 20 minutes to cool in the refrigerator. But, um, if you got people that are coming over right away, you can cook it and always chill it down in another, like a, a bowl of ice. Put this right down in the bowl of ice water. Keep stirring it, and you'll bring it down to uh, you know, pass room temperature quickly. And, um, you can always serve it on ice or whatever. So we've got this still in the low setting. And you might look at it and say, oh, that doesn't look like eggnog, it's a little thin. It's gonna pick it up. We're gonna heat this up. The egg's gonna kinda of turn into a little bit of a, a malty custard type. And it'll it'll tighten up on us once we cook it. So let's get these off of here, get them in the sink. And you guys can follow me right on over here where we're gonna cook everything. So we've got our, our pot of boiling water here. It's just boiling, and uh, let me show you guys. I've got it probably about uh, a quarter of the way full. If you fill it up too much when you put this pot down in it, let's get this over here, it's gonna overfill and splash on your stove. So we're gonna set that right down in that water, just like that. And it's gonna be a little bit at an angle, but that's totally fine. That's what we want. So let's get this going here so you guys can still see what's up. And I got a, a whisk, a little hand whisk here. <clears throat> I'm just gonna sit here and you can see that heavy whipped cream starting to come up to the top. But uh, that's fine, we're just gonna stir it lightly. You don't, you don't wanna whip it, keep whipping it. You're gonna get too much uh, foam in here. Just, just gently stir it. And uh, bring this, and if you gotta adjust your temperature now that we put this cold solution in the hot, it's gonna quit boiling, but it'll it'll be back up. Don't walk away from it or go somewhere and do something, because once it starts boiling up, it's gonna go all over the stove. So, I'm gonna stir this, let you guys uh, not sit here and watch me stir this for about the next 12 minutes. But I've got a, a thermometer. So basically, you pull this off, you got your, this a meat thermometer or any kind of thermometer, you turn it on, you set it down in there, don't touch the bottom, just kind of get it in the middle of the solution. And once it's at 160, 175, it's pasteurized, it's good to go. So I'm gonna stir this lightly, gently, and uh, don't mix it up too much, kind of break up anything if it starts foaming up or starts turning into kind of like a thicker head on top of there. I'm just gonna break it up and just break it down. And I'll see you guys here soon once we're done with this thing heating up. Okay, it's been about maybe 10 minutes or so. And uh, we're just gonna keep stirring this gently. Just make sure you just keep stirring it. Don't walk away from it, stay on it. But the good thing about having this pot submerged down in the water is we're not gonna burn the bottom of this and we're not gonna burn our eggnog. And it's starting to look really good. You can see the spices floating around in there. The color is good. And uh, we'll give it about another five minutes or so, eight minutes. And uh, we'll be back to uh, finish this off and either put it in the cooling process or just let it sit, all right?
All right, guys, so it's probably only been about 12 minutes, somewhere roughly around in there. Uh, and I just kept stirring it, watching it. You can watch it, it gets a little thicker and creamier. Um, it is very runny because it's hot. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, turn the thermometer on here. And I'm not gonna push it all the way down in there. I'm just gonna hold it in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go way down to the bottom and then lift up about an inch. I wanna see the, the, the temperature way down below. We're at 165 right there. Actually about 172. So I'm gonna lift up and put it right in the tip of, of the, the top of the, the eggnog solution. And we're at 168 at top. That's what we want. I want 165 to 170, uh, 175 something. If you, if you overcook it too much, you're gonna burn it. It's gonna start. It's not gonna taste very good. Uh, it'll still it'll still be okay because we're soaking in the water, but you don't want to overcook it because then it's just gonna start getting too hard. It can start clumping up. So now that we've got this solution where we want it, we're gonna go ahead and cool this down. And I've got just a mixing bowl here with some ice and some water in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this off of here back to the back burner. Move this over here, don't set it on the hot burner. And we're just gonna go ahead and set this hot, hot eggnog solution right in this pot here. Make sure you get it sturdy, don't walk away and have it tip over on you. And I'm gonna sit here as well as I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna just keep stirring. The more you stir it, this will cool it down. If you cool it too much and put it right in the refrigerator, you could risk bringing up the temperature into the refrigerator, making the refrigerator work harder, uh, breaking the refrigerator, or making the temperature of all your food in there go up. So I always cool it down first out here and then move it into the refrigerator. If you put it in there scolding hot like this, it is, it is gonna increase the temperature of your refrigerator. Now, um, this is non-alcoholic eggnog. If you wanted alcoholic eggnog, you would wanna add it later after it's cooled down. If, uh, if you add it before we made it, while we were boiling it, the alcohol would have evaporated. You would just be left with the flavor. So now if you want the flavor of the liquor and you don't want the alcohol of the liquor, put the alcohol in back when we were making our mix, right when we started boiling it. That way it gives ample time, 12 to 18 minutes, to boil the, the alcohol out of the solution, especially if somebody doesn't drink. Um, but it'll give you that taste if you want that spiced rum or whatever you want in there. If you want it totally alcoholic, you want the alcohol in and you want the taste, cook it, cool it down, add it to it later, and uh, just mix it up thoroughly where you can add it um, you know, here after it's cool or when it comes out of the refrigerator later. I might just cool this all the way down here and I'll finish it in the refrigerator. If people, individual people want uh, spiced rum or something in it, we can do one shot per glass per person. That way if the kids want some, um, your grandma wants some, grandpa, whomever, your parents, they don't drink, you're not ruining the whole eggnog. If you want to be in a perfect world, you can make one batch that's spiced up with uh, you know, the alcohol, you can have one, one batch that's, that's not, that's just pure. So. We're gonna let this cool down. I'll be back, and uh, when this is cooled and I finish it in the refrigerator, we'll go ahead and pour a glass together and uh, see how it tastes. Might even add a candy cane in my glass. See you shortly. Let me show you guys what I have going on here. Basically, we have the bowl with the ice, and our eggnog solution is floating inside that water. Ice solution. So we'll leave it there. Probably take about 30 minutes. And uh, if you wanted to cool it down quicker, you can keep changing the ice water out. And, uh, cause this will get a little warm, but uh, it's actually pretty cold now. But if people are coming by and you really have to freeze it down quick, just keep changing this ice in the water. And keep doing that and stir it. That way it gets all the heat up out of there. And uh, we'll be ready to go. See you shortly when we share a glass together. All right guys, so we cooled everything off and I actually made two batches today. Um, you can see my one batch here is still cooling right here. And I made one just previous before the one I just showed you. And uh, they're both non-alcoholic. Uh, maybe I'll add something, maybe maybe I won't. Like I said, I'm gonna, if people want it, I'm gonna add the spiced rum or what have you into each glass. But um, I got these little glasses. You can use any kind of glasses. These I keep around just for, you know, little shots of eggnog, special occasions. 
and I've got one and I actually got a candy cane and I broke the bottom off so it's just hanging off of here and it actually one one batch made almost two two of these big mason jars I drank some earlier and um, I chilled this one down these are a little easier to chill in the, the refrigerator like this and they keep a little bit longer so let's pop this top off of here and uh, it's going to be a little messy, but uh, let's see if I can pour it in there so we can have a glass of this together. And hopefully you get yours done. And you got the candy cane. You can do without the candy cane since it's Christmas time tomorrow. Tomorrow's Christmas. Tonight's Christmas Eve. Let's, uh, let's just do a little cheers for the holidays. Just as good if not better in the store and it doesn't have all those preservatives and stuff that they're putting in there to make it have a lot of shelf life. This is way healthier for you. The eggs I used were all organic, farm raised, and you can adjust the spices accordingly. So until next time, next year, figure something else. Maybe I'll do a pie or homemade pumpkin pie. Get some of it, make that eggnog yourself, enjoy it. Um, Excite your friends and they won't believe that you made it, but you can do it. I'm Keith with Two Guys How To. Until next time, get some of it, subscribe, like, and make that eggnog yourself. Save some money and make a good product. I'll see you. Happy holidays. So make some of that eggnog. Go in front of that tree. Live it up while you can. It's awesome. I'll see you. I'm not a pig, I'm a lawyer.